Good morning. This video is one of two that you will be watching on 5.1, which is on mid segments. This first video is going to focus on some vocabulary that's going to be used in this chapter, as well as practice with uh, triangle figures. You should have grabbed a note sheet from the substitute at the front of the classroom. This will better help you fill out the notes as we go through this video together. The focus on this lesson is what is called a mid segment. A mid segment, by definition, is a segment that connects the midpoints of two sides of the triangle. Use the figure up above here to give you a visualization of this. Every triangle will have three mid segments. Because of these being mid segments, it works just like a midpoint. So this point M right here, that is the mid segment of MP and MN, will actually bisect segment AB, thus making AM and MB equal. This ends up being true with the other two sides for the triangle as well. There are two very important traits about the mid-segment. Both, both of these traits are both stated in the mid-segment theorem. The theorem states the two segment, or I'm sorry, the segments connecting the midpoints of two sides of a triangle will be parallel to the third side and will also be half as long as that side. These two traits are very important to remember. The mid-segment will always be parallel to the third side. That means the side that it is not touching. Therefore, in this case, DE is going to be parallel to AC because they're not the intersecting sides of the triangle. Lastly, this is also key, half as long as that side. So DE will be half as long as a segment AC. Using the mid-segment theorem, think about this question. Based on the drawing here, BE is a mid-segment of triangle ACD. Which of the following statements is going to be true in that case? The best recommendation is to go through each of these four and decide what the characteristics are. Nothing is being said about angles, so we can ignore the part about BE being parallel to CD. However, we know BE will be half as long as the segment CD. Which of these four statements best categorizes that? We can eliminate statement D because this really is simply saying that BE is equal to CD. That also means we can eliminate A. So it leaves us down to B and C. If BE is half as long as CD, another way of saying that is if I multiply the length of BE times 2, I will get the length of CD. Therefore, 2 times BE will end up equaling the length of CD. The correct solution for this should be letter B. 2 times BE is congruent to CD. An alternate form of this could be BE is congruent to 1 half of CD. This next question uses the second half of the mid-segment theorem we've talked about. In this problem, it's asking what is the value of the X if BE is a mid-segment of triangle ACD? So in this case, this side of BE will end up being parallel to CD. This is the fact that we want to use for this problem. The four postulates that we talked about in chapter three on parallel lines will end up coming into play here. The 121 degrees and the X are same side interior angles. Based on the same side interior theorem, these two angles will be supplementary to each other. Therefore, 121 plus X is gonna be 180 degrees. That means the angle X here will end up being 59 degrees total. This next question is going to use both facts of the mid-segment theorem. In this problem, I want you to find the value of X and Y, and HJ is our mid-segment here. So with that being said, we know HJ is going to be parallel to GK based on the mid-segment theorem. We also know that HJ will end up being half as long as KG. Since Kg's value is known here, Kg's 18, therefore Hj will end up having a value of just 9. This means x is equal to 9 in this problem. Lastly, in order to find the angle y, we're going to have to use the parallel portion of the mid-segment theorem. Since this angle is 82, I also know this bottom angle J, I'm sorry, GKJ will also be 82 degrees. The large triangle KIG has two of the three known angles of 82 degrees and 15 degrees. 
if I add these two up and subtract it from 180, I'll have my third angle, which is y here. The sum of these angles is 97, so when I subtract that from 180, the value of y here will be 83 degrees. Take a moment to try this next problem in your notes. Pause the video and work on this for a few minutes to see if you can find the value of dh given that ge is a mid-segment of triangle dhf. The part of the mid-segment theorem that you need to use for this problem is involving the segment lengths. Therefore, GE ends up being half as long as segment DH. Therefore, in order for us to say that, we can either write the statement as 1 half times 3x minus 4 is equal to 3 fourths x plus 4. That's one possibility, or you could have gone a different route. You could have instead said 2 times 3 fourths x plus 4 will equal 3x minus 4. Either way you solve this, you're going to end up getting the same result here. Going this route, I'll use the left equation here, and we'll solve this one. 3 fourths times 2 ends up being 3 halves, or 1.5. 2 times 4 is 8. And at this point now, we're just solving the value for x. So when I do that, I will subtract 8 from both sides, and I'll also subtract the 3x from both sides. I'll try to do two steps in one here. 1.5 minus 3 is negative 1.5x. Negative 4 minus 8 is negative 12. Dividing both sides out here will give me an x value of 8. This will not complete the problem, though. What I need to do now is take this 8 and plug it in for what I need to find. It's asking for dh. The length of dh is valued at 3x minus 4, so I'll plug the 8 into the x. 8 times 3 is 24, and 24 minus 4 is going to be 20. If you wanted to check your work, you also should try to plug 8 into the length of GE. The value you should get here is 10, thus showing you that GE ends up being half of HD, which is what the mid-segment theorem states. Take a look at this last problem. Again, pause the video, try to complete the problem yourself, and when you're ready, press play for the solution. This gives you more information than you need, so you want to focus on exactly what information I give you here and use just that only to solve your problem. They're telling you that the length of DF is 3.5x plus 6. They also tell you that the length of BC is going to be 3x plus 36. Again, since angles aren't used, you're not going to need to use the parallel portion of the mid-segment theorem to help you solve this problem. What I instead need to do is focus on the fact, again, that DF is half the length of BC based on the mid-segment theorem. So I can set my equation up in one of two ways. We'll stick with the same way I did the previous problem. I'll multiply the smaller segment by 2, so it'll be 2 times 3.5x plus 6, and that's going to equal 3x plus 36. Again, this is just a normal algebraic equation, so this will end up being 7x. 6 times 2 gives you 12. And from here now, it's just your standard old solving equation problem. So that's going to be 4x. I subtract the 12 over to the other side. That's going to give me 24. And 24 divided by 4 gives you an x value of 6. Again, be careful with these algebraic problems because this is not what I'm asking you for. I'm asking you to tell me what the length of df is. Since x is equal to 6, df is equal to 3.5x plus 6. I'm going to plug x into this, and I will end up with a result of 27. This will conclude part 1 of section 5.1. Depending on your class, you may be asked to watch part 2 of the video immediately to finish your notes, or you may be asked to complete some classwork. Please refer to the assignment Google Doc that is on my website.